My New Kid, Chapter 1, Super Cody. Is your fly zipped? Cody's mother looked over from behind the steering wheel of their blue station wagon. Cody zipped his pants. Tuck in your shirt. I don't feel so good, he said. He saw a school crossing sign out the window, and his stomach tightened. Cody pulled down the car sun visor and looked in the mirror. Maybe I'm sick, he said hopefully. Look at these spots. I think I have chicken pox. Cody, keep your imagination under control. Those are freckles. His mother stopped at a stop sign. You do not have chicken pox. You just don't want to go to school. She drove on. The first day is always the hardest. You'll be just fine. I don't see any parking places, said Cody. Let's try again tomorrow. Or next week. A red jeep pulled out right in front of the school. Oh, good, said his mother. Here's one. The school was a tall red brick building with lots of windows. It did not look at all like his old school. To Cody, it looked more like a prison. He imagined what, that he was, being a, he was a prisoner being driven to jail. Don't I get a last request, warden? He said to his mother. She swung into the parking place. Don't be silly. Be yourself. By the end of the day, you'll have lots of new friends. You'll love this school. Small groups of kids were walking toward the building. They laughed and talked. He wondered what his friends Aaron and Kate were doing. If he were still in Topeka, he would be with them. Making them laugh. School was fun with Aaron and Kate. One whole week last month, they pretended to be from another planet. They talked like robots and walked like robots. Everyone had laughed, even his teacher. Another time, they pretended to be able to read the teacher's mind. They got out their lunch boxes and lined up for lunch before she had called them. And once they pretended that the cafeteria was haunted. Why else would their meatloaf have that greenish color? Right now, back in Topeka, Kate and Aaron were walking into his old school, laughing and talking like these kids these strangers. You told me never to speak to strangers. That's what those are, Mom. She sighed. Cody, you're hopeless. I give you permission just for today to speak to strangers. Come on. He didn't move. He promised it will be fine. She was already out of the car. My legs, Mom. I can't move my legs. She opened the car door and looked down at him. There is nothing wrong with your legs. Slowly he got out of the car and began limping toward the red brick building. I really should stay home. I mean, you might need me, Mom. You'll be all alone, he said to her back. I'll be fine. I'll have Pal to keep me company. She kept walking. But Pal's a dog. He can't help you unpack. Mom, she didn't respond, only held the door open for him. As they walked together to the office, he had that prisoner feeling again. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Susan Michaels and this is Cody. We just moved from Topeka, she said to the lady at the office. The lady leaned out the window and looked at him. Second grade, she asked. Third, his mother answered. Cody stood up straighter. Welcome to Danville School, the lady said. Come in. Come on in, Mrs. Michaels. We have some papers for you to fill out. Cody can sit in the hall on the bench. Cody sat down alone and clutched his book bag. Inside was all his new stuff. He missed his old stuff. His chewed pencils, his notebook covered with his drawings. His mother had not been able to find... <coughs> his school things in the moving boxes yesterday so they'd had they'd had to buy everything new the pencils came in a pack that said new and improved the note pack, notebook paper pack said super and deluxe 
A girl passed him in the hall. She wore a purple t-shirt and had lots of red curly hair. She was the only person he had ever seen who had more freckles than he did. She smiled at him. At least he thought she smiled at him. Maybe she didn't smile at him. He looked down quickly. Who would want to be friends with him anyway? He was just plain old Cody who was too short and too freckled whose father worked in a bank and whose mother sold computers. His family drove an ordinary station wagon and had an ordinary cocker spaniel who did nothing but sleep. Boring. He thought about his new pencils and the paper and wished he could be new, improved, super, or deluxe. Deluxe means like special, very special. It's another ki new kid, a boy said to his friend as they passed Cody in the hall. Watching the boys walk down the hall, Cody wished with all his might that he was not just another new kid. Then, as he waited for his mother, he had an idea. No one knew him here. He could be anything that he wanted to be. He would no longer be plain old Cody. He would be a new version of himself, like the pencils and the notebook paper. He could use his imagination to make a new Cody. For once, his pretending would not have to be for fun. It would be for survival. Super Cody. His mother came out and gave him a hug. Miss Mallet will be right out to take you to your new classroom. She straightened his shirt, then rubbed his cheek with spit. Remember what your dad told you this morning, she said about the little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can. Mom, I'm not a baby. I know, Cody, I just want you to think positive. I think I positively don't wanna be here. Cody, she said, the kids will love you. Miss Mallet came out of the office. Cody gave one more pleading look at his mother before he turned and walked down the hall. And remember, be yourself, said his mother, which was which is one thing he had decided not to be. One super deluxe new kid coming up. Chapter 2 The Little Dork That Couldn't This is our new kid, Cody Michaels. Cody was standing in front of his new class with his new teacher, Miss Harvey. A classroom full of strangers looked back. His heart was beating fast, faster, he was sure, than it ever had before. He imagined again that he was a prisoner. Twenty pairs of eyes were fixed on him like the guns of a firing squad. The girl with the purple t-shirt, he noticed, sat in the front row. "'Tell us something about yourself, Cody,' Miss Harvey said. "'Where are you from?' He rubbed his hands together to stop them from shaking. Topeka sounded so boring. It was time to create a new Cody. Alaska, he said. We lived in an igloo. My, his teacher said. The 20 pairs of eyes widened. Now he had their attention. He felt a ripple of excitement, like the kind he felt when he made a soccer at goal at soccer. They believed him. He took a deep breath, tucked his hands down into his pockets, and continued. And I'm smart. Super smart. In fact, I'm a genius. He stood up taller. Everything was going great. As a baby, my first word was encyclopedia. Miss Harvey blinked. Tell us about your family. He thought for a second. His family was boring, too. But not for long. My dad works for the FBI. He's a secret agent. Oh, said Miss Harvey, said. My mom drives a red jag. Cool, said a boy in the back. Being super Cody was terrific. He was in control. He could have anything. He could be anything. With black leather seats, he added. And a fax machine. Well said Miss Harvey. She paused, then asked, any pets? J 
Just pal, Cody answered, then remembered that he was super Cody now.